just on my way to the Pyramids of Ki or Pyramids of Chi to do an interview with the owners, Peter and Lynn, and I'm in the best car ever. This car is amazing. And my driver is Yogi. Hi, Yogi. Hi. <laughs> and we've just been sitting in some lovely Bali traffic, but it, we're moving now and uh, we're well on our way. I love, I just love Bali. I love this amazing quilted ceiling so I shall keep you updated arrived at the pyramids and I'm here with Eka Hello. and Ilu. Hello! <laughs> and they've just given me a welcome drink. What's in this? Watermelon, lime and ginger. Watermelon, lime and ginger. Yeah. Amazing. Cheers, happy full moon! Yeah. <laughs> happy full moon! Happy full moon! <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Alexandra Wenman show from beautiful, tropical and rather sweaty Bali. Uh, I'm here with the lovely Peter McIntosh who is the owner and founder of the Pyramids of Chi here in Ubud. So Peter, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for the opportunity Alexandra and yeah, it is a little bit hot today and <laughs> this afternoon it's got a bit sweaty because it's been uh, very, very uh, wet lately and uh, a lot of hot sun today drying everything out. So. It'll be cool in about another 15 minutes and it'll be better. We can have a lie down and a cool down yeah. in the ceremony, can't we? <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about how this place came to be? Because sure. it's an amazing vision you've got here. Yeah, look, it was uh, quite a, an interesting story. Uh, my wife and I had retired. Uh, we'd gone off to travel around North America for on and off for about three or four years and then on permanently for about three years. We had to come back to Australia from Perth, uh, where we were from originally, for Lynn to have an operation on her eyes. Only a simple operation, but one of those operations that didn't quite work. So we came up to Bali just to wait it out for a couple of months. Uh, while we are here, I did a meditation one day. We're both quite spiritual people. and So I took myself off and did this meditation. And uh, during it, I got a very, very strong message, build two pyramids. Wow. And I'm like, uh, really? You got the right guy here? You know, built pyramids <laughs> in Bali? Anyway, I saw the vision and I, I got the message. So I went to Lynn and I said, uh, darling, uh, darling, and you know what that means. <laughs> it's like she's like, mm-hmm. Uh, what? You know? I said, well, I've just done a uh, meditation, been told we have to build two pyramids. What? Wow. We have to build two pyramids. <laughs> so she says, Peter, did you say pyramids? Yeah, and what I, have you been on, Peter? <laughs> and I said, yeah, pyramids. She said, Peter, we don't even live here. You know, we, mm. we live, our, our home is in America right now. We're traveling around, you know that. I said, well, it was a very strong message. So I thought, well, maybe we've got to listen to it. Yeah. You know? So we did. We, we checked it out and we looked around uh, to see if we could find some land. Couldn't find any until we walked on this property here. Wow. We'd looked all over Uber. Nothing was available. We walked on this land. And the moment I stepped foot on the rice fields here, and it was just pure rice fields like you'll see around here now, uh, I got the goosebumps in the back of my arm. It's off in the way. Yeah. <laughs> I turned to Lynn, and I, before I'd even up my mouth, she was said, she yeah, like... I just got the same. Wow. Just got the same. So by the time we navigated our way down to the river at the bottom end of the property here, which is no mean feat, because if you've been to Bali and you've seen the rice fields, you've got a little walking area about that wide, you know, wet grass between the rice fields, so you kind of navigate your way down there. I think there. everywhere in Bali is a bit like walking a tightrope, right? <laughs> it can be, yeah, especially on uh, when you decide to head off into the fields. You uh -huh. know. Um, and on either side, of course, there's mud this deep. Yeah. So we made our way down there, 
By the time we got to the bottom, we knew we knew that's where we meant to be. Mm. You know, we knew this land was was earmarked for the pyramids, but we didn't have the money. And mm. you know, we'd done some research already, just rough figures, and knew that it was going to take probably one and a half, two million dollars to build what you've seen around here. We didn't um, have that sort of cash lying around, so we took ourselves back to Australia. I saw a friend of mine down there, Chris, and I said to Chris, Chris, how do I raise a million dollars to build a couple of pyramids in Bali? Well, he just laughed. <laughs> and raised his glass of wine and said, Peter, haven't you heard about the global financial crisis? Now, this is, this is going back to 2013, so, mm. of course, there was a bit of a tightness there. So we thought, OK, that shuts that door. So we thought, what else can we do? In our, uh, our journey down the spiritual path, we discovered that there's another way of communicating, and yeah. it's called automatic writing. Yes. Some people use the pendulum. Um, we also use the divining rods. But the automatic writing is a lot quicker. And this is where, folks, you, you, you might be right-handed like I am, and so you write the question on a piece of paper, and on another piece of paper, like an open book, um, you write the answers down to that question. It's amazing. I've done it, it before. Is. It's brilliant. It yeah. is. You know, and you've got to be, you've got to have your belief. You've got to have your faith, and that's who you're talking to. Whether it's God, universe, spirit, Krishna, Buddha, whatever it is, you've got to have that belief. You've got to get yourself out of the way a bit, don't you? You've got to put yourself <laughs> into a nice meditative state, wrap yourself in the white light, and away you go. So we ask the question, God, if you want us to build pyramids, where's the money? <laughs> Maybe not that flippantly, but anyway, yeah. along those lines. Show me the money, God. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, Lynn's in one room, I'm in the other. Uh, after a little while, and because when you write the words down, what you do is you write the first word that comes into your mind, but you're writing it with the other hand, the non-dominant hand. Mm. So you've got to really concentrate on writing each letter, not mm. just each word, because if you don't, you won't be able to read it afterwards. It's just going to be one big scribble. So we did this. Lynn comes out of the, the other room. She says... I got told there's people waiting to give it to us. Wow. I said, really, look at my answer. Virtually the same. Okay. So very quickly, how do we find them? You know, uh, And typical spirit comes back with a very cryptic answer. Don't spend much money. Four words. Don't spend much money. Well, I've had 45 years in marketing. Mm. You know, to go and raise a million dollars without spending any money to find investors? Mm. Come on, you know. Anyway, that's what we did. We put a little classified advertisement in the local paper in Australia, uh, a free ad called uh, on a website called Gumtree in Australia, a bit like Craigslist in America. I think Gumtree is pretty global now. It is, yeah, yeah it is. most people. Yeah. And um, then stepped outside, spirit. We've done what you asked. Forty dollars, not much. Let's see how good you are. All right. If we're meant to do the pyramids, you'll come up with the money within three weeks. We had $750,000, that's three quarters of a million dollars, sitting in our bank account. Oh my goodness. Don't tell me that's not divine Where did intervention. It, so who, who stepped up? Where did it come from? Three different investors. Wow. They all invested uh, 250000 for a 10% share. Wow. But what was intriguing about them all was that none of them knew us, none of them knew each other, but not one of them asked to see my business plan. Not one of them. So they weren't investing in our business. They were investing in our vision, mm. in Peter and Lynn, in Bali. Or maybe, more than likely, they'd just been guided to invest. Yeah. Whatever the reasons were, we then knew, end of retirement, you know, back to work again. Wow. So we went back to America, sold off our rig, came over to Bali. That was six years ago now, almost to the, to the day last month on Yuppie Day. Uh, mm. That's when we had it. So, yeah, it's been an interesting, uh, interesting journey since then. Lots of challenges, uh, lots of tough times, you know, because we, we didn't always have a lot of spare money around. Times had got low and then it would pick up again. We'd get another investor come in, whatever. But we have the finished product now. The next month we'll see us operating for two years here. And it's going unbelievably well. Wow. Far better than we ever thought it would. Um, over 80% of the people that join us here or visit us here have been before or are recommended by someone who has been here before or someone who's been here brings their friends along. Yeah. Um, I've been in business for many, many years and I've never, ever had a business where 80% of the uh, your customers 
our uh, referrals. Yeah. That's just staggering. That's amazing. Um, so, you know, we can only blame Spirit for that one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, Peter, before you got the message about Build the Pyramids, mm-hmm. did you have a thing for pyramids or did you have any past life memories of like Egypt or anything come up? Or? No, what had happened was we had been living in England for a while. I've had a number of businesses during my life and we'd had a franchise business that we'd taken off to the UK and Europe. Um, and then when we sold out of that, we moved back to Perth, where we're from. Uh, literally had some had a friend there that had built a little, what he called the quiet cone, which is virtually a uh, like a little pyramidal shaped building, like an Indian teepee. Mm-hmm. And he could put up to 12 people inside there and play the gongs and drums and so on. And he asked us if we'd get involved. And I said, Paul, no, it's a bit flaky, you know. <laughs> Playing gongs flaky. to people, what's going on here, you know. Anyway, he persisted and he said, oh, we can franchise this. And I thought, oh, well, we'll go and check it out. Do you know, that was the start of my spiritual path. Laid down, Paul played this beautiful gong and immediately something resonated. Something happened and I knew that this was our path, mm. you know. And Lynn said the same. She said, wow, something happened in there, didn't it? And I said, I don't know what it was, but something's happening. Within six months, we'd bought his business out and we brought a man over from England to teach us how to play the gong properly rather than just winging it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what we did for about uh, five or six years, but it was was more of a hobby type business. It was on the the quiet, so to speak. You know, we did it on weekends, full moons, things like that. Mm and it was it was a feel-good thing. Mm. Right? It wasn't a commercial business, it was a feel-good. Mm. But then we went off to America, we left a couple of ladies to look after running it, managing it for us. They did a fantastic job of that. Um, so when we end up here, and when, when, when I got this message to build two pyramids, I said, I know where you're coming from, God. Yeah. You know, you yeah. know we know how to play the gongs already. You know we know the spiritual path. We're, you know, we're, we've, we've gone down the route of seeing a lot of healing. And knew like that you were a businessman. Too, yeah. Because everything's part of it, isn't it? Totally. Yeah. You know, I've had, you know, 40-odd years of my own businesses and all of that added up to what was needed here. Lynn and I were only talking oh, about a week or so ago and we realised that we ticked all the boxes, no matter what we'd done in life, we kind of incorporated them in some ways into what we've done in this project. Mm. So it's wow. been... Uh, so they've all been little stepping stones along your path. Certainly have. That's certainly fantastic. Have. It is, isn't it? You know, so amazing. So don't ever think that you know what you're doing. <laughs> no. Because <laughs> you don't... Because your higher self knows better. Of, yeah, <laughs> the strings are being pulled and, you know, you might think, what am I doing this for? Or why did this happen? Or why did that happen? It'll become evident sooner or later. And when it does, you'll go, okay, hold that faith, it was there for a reason. It was absolutely yeah. there for a reason. Yeah. So in terms of pyramids, yeah. obviously um, you and I know mm. that, that, that mm. the pyramids are different to mm-hmm. what the historians would tell us they are. Sure, sure. So w- tell us a little bit about your take on the pyramids and pyramid technology and, mm-hmm. and how they sort of work in terms of, uh, I guess, spiritual awakening, energy work and, and all of those kinds of things. You've asked me about 20 questions. I know, sorry, I do that often. (laughs) (laughs) No, look, 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 that's fine. Pyramids fascinate us as well. And um, for all your viewers there, the one thing that we've learned about pyramids is that someone created them a long, long time ago, certainly before the history books suggest they were. Mm -hmm. Pyramids all over the world, and there's thousands of them, are all built to a formula. It's known as sacred geometry. The angle at the base is 52 degrees, in real to 51.8 degrees, mm-hmm. and that's the same no matter where you go around the world. They've all got one of their walls aligned exactly to true north, not to magnetic north, because that moves, but true north. So they've all got those two things in common, which is fascinating. And mm-hmm. we had a lady from Guatemala visit us recently, and, and, our, uh, and she's in the audience when we were doing a, um, a whole, um, introduction and she was telling the rest of the people there about 40 of them that they recently found over 40 pyramids in the jungle there by overflying with an aircraft and doing ground penetrating radar there was also a boy wasn't there there was an 11 year old boy Mm. who he must have had a past life Mm. memory i think Mm. or something going on because he by mapping where all the pyramids were, yeah. and I'm pretty sure this was in either in Mexico or Guatemala, I can't yeah, remember which yeah. one, but it was in Central America. And he sh- 
showed up for a school project yeah. and said, by my calculations, these pyramids align to those stars, these align to That's those, right. and there should be a temple here. Yeah. And they found one. Of course. Right where the 11-year-old told them it would be. Well, you know, the twist of that story that I just told a moment ago about the aircraft was that I had a lady sitting here about three months later and she was sort of laughing and, she, and I said, what are you laughing at? Her name is Jackie. I said, what are you laughing at, Jackie? And she said, um, well, that story you told about, you know, finding 700 pyramids in, in, in Guatemala. And I said, oh, gosh, did I get it wrong? Because this lady seemed very strong about that. And I did research it and it stated it. And she said, well, I was actually one of the pilots on that aircraft. You're joking. Yeah. Oh, my God. And she said, uh, we were chartered by National Geographic. Wow. Right? I said, OK, but you still haven't told me what was funny about it. <laughs> and she said, we only covered half the jungle. We oh. ran out of time with the charter. So what else is there? So is there 700, is there 1,400, is there two? We don't know. Well, there's pyramids under the ocean too, there's isn't there? pyramids under the ocean. The they even reckon they found three pyramids down in Antarctica. Yeah. So who knows? One thing we do know, they found one on the next island here. Mm. Uh, what we do know about pyramids is they were put there for a reason. Uh, there's not too many countries around. Certainly every continent has got, uh, got pyramids yeah. there. Yeah and they were put there for a reason. We don't know what the reasons were. Um, people like Graham Hancock, who have um, studied and studied pyramids all their lives, suggest that they draw power from above and below and they act like a, uh, a, a big battery. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, they hold that energy yeah. within. What they did with that energy, mm -hmm. We're waiting for the people with the funny shaped skulls to tell well, us. Well, I've been channeling some information about yeah. it as well and I got given information when I went in April and I've, I've only read one Graham Hancock book I kind of don't mm. I know of these people I know mm. what they're talking about but I kind of deliberately don't go and read other people's stuff because I don't want it to influence sure. what I know sure. um, but I got shown that it you actually uses the human we are the battery mm -hmm. and then mm. the pyramid amplifies the, the free energy that I mean we're animated right we don't sure. plug ourselves into a wall and we are the electricity we you yeah, know everything yeah. it's like the space between things isn't it and yeah. somehow I think they were harnessing it and maybe through the initiations in some way yeah. amplifying the energy. Could but they be. used the water and they used all the conductors like crystal yeah. and lime scale and granite and all of it. But it's fascinating. We may never know in our lifetime exactly. But I hope we do. But I hope so. Um, but, you know, we see the results virtually every day. We see people coming out of the pyramids. A lot of them get very emotionally affected. Yeah. You know, you see tears running. Um, the red eyes, uh, because the pyramid power is something you could almost touch and feel. The majority of people that go in there will come out afterwards and they're all sort of like this because they're almost spaced out just from being in that deep relaxed state, but also the fact that the energies are working down on them. When we play those gongs or didgeridoos or drums, sounds are bouncing off the walls, back down onto their bodies. Their body, bodies are 70% water and these sounds start working up and down through their chakra systems and start rebalancing them. Yeah. And doing that rebalancing, we get a lot of healing happening. We get a lot of clearing, um, a lot of blockages removed, a whole lot of things that people hang on to that they don't need to be carrying around. And many, many I could talk the rest of the afternoon and the evening. I've got loads of um, stories, oh, right? I got, Case studies. I got stacks. Yeah. I got stacks of people that have had the most incredible results out of going into the pyramid. May not happen on the first time because, you know, the mind tends to be a bit conditioned and it's a little bit like, what's going on? But it sure as does happen within a couple of times at least. And people start to come to that realization that, you know, maybe I need to listen to this mm. instead of listening to that. Mm. And that's what the pyramids do. They, they do channel a lot of energy back to the heart. Mm. And for those people that are, open-minded, even if they go in the sceptics, and we've had plenty of sceptics here. We've had stacks of sceptics here. I love it when the sceptics come oh, in. Oh, yeah, because they experience. go in with no expectations. Yeah. When they come out and something's happened, yeah. it's like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. And they God. get their yeah. evidence, right? <laughs> yeah. It's brilliant. So <laughs> it's, it is a thing that happens all the time, and not to everybody, but many, many people do experience mm. something very special, and that's why they go off and they tell other people, and other people come here, but all I say to everybody is don't go in there with any expectation. Mm. Go in there 
just an open mind, open heart, and be prepared. Expect the unexpected, because whatever's meant to be will be. Will be. You know, because it's all it's all pre-written anyway. It's all pre-written. You know? yeah. And well, while we're filming this as well, we're yeah. we're on a, a very potent Libra super full moon, aren't we tonight? We sure are. and, uh, yeah. I'm already feeling it. I don't know if you're already feeling it. Well, but... it's also <laughs> the autumn equinox, so yes. we've got a whole lot of things coming in together. Yeah. Um, spring equinox if you're in the equinox, north. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's, there's some interesting energies around tonight. For Incredible. Sure. So, on, on, in terms of the the events that that you run here, what mm-hmm. kinds of different events go on here? Oh, we do many. The the key event we do here is every day we do at least two sessions of what we call uh, the sacred sounds, the ancient sounds. All the instruments that we play in the pyramid were all instruments that were created before history drums, didgeridoos, singing bowls, you know, uh, they're instruments that were used for healing long before history, long before music. Mm-hmm. Right? They weren't created for music, they were created for healing purposes. So when we're using them in the pyramid, and it's a combination of them, uh, those sounds, and it only takes a small amount of frequency to go to work on one of your chakras and start that healing process happening. So when it does happen, you know, it could be physical, you could have something happening in your body, it could be uh, very emotional, your heart, or it could be something totally mental, and we've had them all. And, you know, as I say, I could talk forever on so many beautiful occurrences. Amazing. So, should we take people on a little tour of the pyramids and sounds, show them around a bit? Sounds like a great idea. Amazing. What you're seeing here is two beautiful big pyramids. Uh, the one on the left is the Pyramid of the Moon, the one on the right is the Pyramid of the Sun. Uh, the Moon is 12 by 12 metres, the Sun is 14 by 14 metres. Uh, very large, very um, capable of holding a number of people. The Sun will have 65 people in it tonight, so as you can see it's got quite a great capacity. They're all surrounded by water. Uh, shortly we'll be turning the fountains on and the lighting on and they look absolutely fantastic at night time but the water also adds to the energy aspect uh, that uh, the fact that the the water is there it all improves the whole um, flow of energy here so uh, and it also helps with the cooling so mm. the air comes off the water between the two walls expels through the roof and just keeps the place at a beautiful temperature as well mm-hmm. just entering into this is the pyramid of the sun right Peter so we're just entering into the pyramid of the sun and as you can see how many people can fit in this space and there's the magnificent gongs and instruments in the center what have we got here Peter there's so many What we have here is a beautiful big chow gong. Uh, all our gongs come from China. They're all handmade. Uh, they're bronze material. And you'll hear this when I play this one now. Every one of these mallets will produce, or wands, we call those a wand, a different sound. Wow. You'll hear the sound coming off this one. We've got something like the smaller one. We play this on this beautiful gong here. This is what's known as a, a, a wind gong. 
is uh, quite quite special. A wind gong. A wind gong. So a big one, but much bigger than these smaller ones that you carry. She sounds a little bit like whales underwater. Instruments, different uh, sounds. We use these as well. This is another beautiful ancient instrument from Tibet known as the Tingshars. Once again, they go right through to your pineal really gland do. and many other uh, of your organs. And we have, as you can see, many drums. Oh, I love these Koshi, ones. They, what are they yeah, called again? Koshi bells. Koshi yeah. bells, I love them. Yeah, they're, they're quite quite unique, quite special. We even have an old Balinese uh, gong here. So. And then of course, one of the things that are very, very popular are the, uh, the singing bowls. It must feel like heaven to play here when people are all like zenning out. Well, that's the beautiful thing. Sometimes you've got to watch the time because you just get so in the zone, you just want to keep playing, you know. And, and, and you see the results with people. You see the relaxation. You see the, the whole effect of people just going down and just going totally relaxed. So, yeah, it is. It's a beautiful thing. One thing I've often found is I might come in here and I might be a bit tired before I start. By the time I leave, I'm charged. Mm. I am so charged up, ready to go, because, you know, I, we're bringing the energy here just by playing this as well. We're attracting that energy. We're drawing it in. We're drawing it from below. We're drawing it from above. And, of course, uh, we're sharing it with everybody that's here with us. And that makes it kind of special, particularly when we see so many reactions. Mm. That's beautiful. So I'm excited to know what's on the agenda for tonight. Can you can you fill sure. me in, Peter, or is it a secret? What? <laughs> well, tonight we have a, uh, a full moon ceremony. We start off with the, uh, the smudging, where we use beautiful sage to clear the, the visitors' auras right around their, uh, their whole uh, uh, biosphere, the whole lot. So we, we use that, we then go down around the fire pit. We've got a beautiful big fire pit here and form a beautiful big wide circle. And then we have a special uh, person to conduct a shamanic ceremony. Wow. It's uh, Brother Joseph Whitehall. He's a Cherokee descent. Amazing. And uh, uh, Joseph does the, the four directions, calling into the four directions, which is a, it's a prayer ceremony that's been going on with cultures from all over the world for many, many thousands of years. It's virtually giving thanks. It's giving thanks to the spirits, to the totems, to the uh, energies of north, south, east and west. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we virtually form a circle. We face each of the directions as he uh, gives thanks and calls in the spirits, calls in the totems. Uh, and then when we finish that, we hand around a bowl of cornmeal, which is the uh, symbolic offering mm -hmm. for many, many um, ancient uh, civilizations. And everybody takes a pinch with the left hand, they hold it near their heart, and they think of whatever intent they want to see have happened in their lives. Mm. And then when we finish the, uh, the actual circulating of that, we play the drums over their head, and then uh, Joseph will suggest to them, okay, when the right time comes, to step forward and commit that intent the cornmeal into the, into fire, the fire goes in the smoke to spirit 
and hopefully Spirit listens to them and grants the intent that they're, they're seeking or the prayer or the desires, whatever it might be. From there, make our way back up to the pyramid in, that you just saw inside. Everybody lays down on a mattress that they, they go to, they select. There's not one given to them, they just select whichever one they feel drawn to. And then we start playing. We do a bit of an introduction in there, but then we start playing and uh, everybody just zens out. They, they go into a beautiful state of relaxation. So great. <laughs> so great. And then, of course, if they're fortunate enough, they'll experience the sound healing as well. Mm -hmm. We always have two players in there for a, every um, full moon night and very energetic, very strong energies because that's when the, the moon's closest to Earth, that's when the energies are the strongest and it can get a little bit uh, loud in there at times yep. but that's echoing the energies that we're all experiencing uh, but beautiful everybody loves it uh, we do make sure that everybody leaves very quietly because a lot of people want to hold that space for mm. a while longer we've had people that stayed there all night mm. because they've just got you know such a beautiful gift from being in there and then they uh, they make their way up to the cafe uh, we serve a beautiful big three-course supper uh, and all our tables up there are all pretty little round tables, settees facing together, where we encourage everybody to sit and chat with others. So you're communicate. creating community as well, aren't oh, you? Oh, totally. We, we actively mention, I will before the, the whole event starts, we ask everybody up there, please, if you see someone on their own, invite them to join your table. Yeah. And we've had many people that form long friendships over that because, you know, we're all about communications. We don't do Wi-Fi here. Uh, we make no apology for it. Uh, <laughs> this place is about communicating mm. and enjoying. It's very Instagrammable, though, I have to say. We have is. to Instagram it later. <laughs> it is. Yeah, there's plenty of opportunities there for some fabulous shots and photos. Yeah. And, and little clips like we're doing now where you can talk to somebody and say, what did you think of it? And they go, oh, it was amazing. It was fantastic. It was mm. wonderful. Or I can't stop crying. <laughs> Whatever it might be. And yeah. We just, um, we're so in awe of the whole thing happening and we feel very blessed. I bet it moves it you so much to see your vision come to life like this. It's just so incredible. Well, and, it does. When yeah. we ride home at night time at the end of this, uh, which makes a very long day of it because sometimes we don't get away until about 11 o'clock at night because people don't want to go home. <laughs> they don't want to let you go, I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> chat, 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 you know. But that's all part of the fun. Um, all the way home, and we live about two kilometres away, we're on absolute high, yeah. absolute high, because we see the results yeah. from so many people, and that's what makes it all so worthwhile. What a life, eh? Pretty good dream. <laughs> so, look, if Peter here can manifest this, yeah, you know, without even knowing he needed to, <laughs> then you can manifest whatever you want. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go off and set some intentions for tonight. I think, but I think you should. And um, my advice to everybody in any interviews I ever do like this, I always finish with the same statement, mm -hmm. and that is. Do not trust this stuff that keeps your ears apart. Listen to your heart all the time. I wish I'd learned that lesson many yeah. years ago. Instead of chasing money, chase the inner, yeah. the inner being, the inner self, the rewards that you get. You might have a new car, but it's nothing like when you help somebody that's in need or that you feel that inner peace that you're seeking rather than the frustration of going to work again or whatever it might be. So yeah. follow your hearts, folks, because it's, it's a great way to, uh, to live your life. Amazing. Peter, thank you so much for thank talking you. to me today. Can I give you a hug? Always. Mm. Always. And thank when you're doing you. your hugs, folks, you may or may not have noticed how I just hugged Alexander. Heart to heart. Heart to heart. All right? For your heart to heart, you go the opposite way to what you're normally used to. And when you finish that hug, don't do the double tap. Don't do this yes. because that means you give up. Yeah. Right? <laughs> just do a nice rub or a squeeze yeah. or whatever. And the longer you hold that hug the more effective it's going to be. And you wait and see how many people you affect yeah. with a beautiful home. Yeah, We've even created a little energetic pyramid between us here. I can feel <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> so, Peter, how can people find you online? What's the website? Very, very easy. www.pyramids, pyramids, not pyramid, pyramids of chi. Dot com. Dot com. C H I chi as in energy. Chi. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank okay. you. So from our hearts to yours, mm -hmm. yeah. thank you so much for watching. If you get to Bali, come and see and, and partake in one of the ceremonies here at the Pyramids of Chi. It's an absolutely beautiful space and I'm so excited to experience the ceremony tonight. And thank you, Peter, for speaking with me. Thank you for joining us and thank you for the opportunity of sharing with your your viewers. And okay. 
Thank you for watching. Okay, bye. That's Eka. Eka. This is Elizabeth. Hi. This is beautiful. What we do for Doing the full moon job. is we create um, our own imagery here. And uh, yeah, we do the mandalas. We do a whole lot of um, just making the place that much more appealing and attractive to people yeah. when they do visit us. Special yeah. event. Yep. Just come out of the full moon in Libra, massive session oh in the pyramids, goodness. and I've yeah. run into Lynn, and we're just talking about <laughs> how. Yeah, I'm glad I did the oh. actual main interview before. Yeah, and Alex is really, really <laughs> relaxed, and she's flying out tomorrow, so that's a good thing because <laughs> yeah. she'll she'll enjoy the flight no end. In fact, she'll feel like she's doing the flight. I'll be flying. <laughs> yeah, I think I already am. <laughs> No, oh, it's beautiful. But so, yeah. thank you so much no, for everything. So, so well. It's been amazing. It's been lovely to have you, oh, Alex. We'll be and I'm again. so pleased that you enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah. Everybody has a different experience, yeah. but you know, that's yeah. what life's about, isn't it? Yeah. Experience and, and yeah. what you get out of it. I'm so, so glad you guys built this place. It's oh, amazing. Me too. Me beautiful. too. We're so proud of it. Very, very proud of it. Amazing. So, it's really, really. So if you guys come to Bali, you must come to the Pyramids of Chi. It's Please amazing. Do. I'm going to float do. off to bed now. <laughs> Bye. Good night.